Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about the production of sound by birds. Like mammals, particularly humans, birds produce sound with their respiratory system, with this um, system that deals with uptake of oxygen from the air into the body. And so uh, in humans, we um, have a specialized structure in our trachea called our larynx. And that larynx consists of, um, it's a fairly complex structure that consists of cartilaginous bands and we can constrict and expand that area to control the speed at which air is moving through and also we can influence how loud or soft a sound is by how much air we're pushing through. Now birds have a similar structure but it's not the same. Um, it's called, our, our voice box is called the larynx. A bird's vocal apparatus is called the syrinx and the syrinx is actually in a slightly different location. It's actually located much deeper down the um, windpipe. It's actually at the area where the trachea, so here's the trachea, what we call the windpipe, where that trachea splits into two bronchi. We also have two bronchi. And so that area, the, the junction between the trachea and the bronchi is where a bird's syrinx is located. So if you were to point to where that it's located on you, it would be somewhere closer down in your chest, further down in your chest. And so um, this is a nice schematic of the basics of a bird respiratory system with the trachea, the bronchi, the lungs. There are also air sacs that are part of the bird respiratory system. Birds actually have one way flow of air across the lungs. And we'll talk about that in another um, lecture. But this syrinx in many ways is similar to a larynx in that there are specialized structures in here, cartilaginous bands, the, the windpipes in the syrinx, so that it's actually got, there's two areas where air can be flowing across this vocal apparatus. They, they can shrink and expand, and so when you shrink the, the air pipes in, in, this, um, in the production of sound, you get faster waves of sound being um, emitted, and that's higher pitched. And when you have those, uh, those bands opening or those areas opening, you get lower pitched sounds. And so this is an external view of the syrinx right here. And so there are a lot of specialized muscles in this area that control the opening and closing of these um, two pipes. Again, here's your external view on the left. And you can see these tracheal rings and then these specialized syringeal muscles here. Um, what's interesting to see here in this longitudinal section, if you're able to look inside the syrinx, is that it's not just two air pipes. There are some other specialized features in here, particularly um, different kinds of labium. So we have lateral labium, two lateral labia on the outside, and then there are also medial labia. And these are basically folds of tissue that can constrict and, and open um, and are controlled by muscle, muscular movement, okay? And so when a bird produces sound, it can actually differentiate, depending on the species, it can differentially control the labia on the right, the labium on the right side of its syrinx and the labia on the left side of its syrinx. And in most birds, uh, sound production on the left side of the syrinx tends to be of lower pitched, lower frequency sounds. And on the right is where the higher pitched, higher frequency sounds are made. And so yes, a bird can actually um, have a broader, basically, vocal range by having these two sides. Um, and a bird can actually sing from one side or the other side or both sides at once. So a bird can almost duet with itself. It can make two different types of sound simultaneously from its vocal apparatus, which is pretty amazing. Here's a visualization of that. And so you see here, left and then right and then both sides and the different color waves, you know, um, waves that we're seeing here, left, right, both, are representing different types of sounds. And so you can see that the bird can make one type, the other type, and they sometimes do that, and then sometimes they're making both different types at the same time. So um, if you actually look at the syrinx of birds, which people used to do a lot before we have had much genetic data to differentiate um, particularly songbirds from one another, you can find different levels of complexity in those syringeal muscles and, and other features of the syrinx. And 
some of our songbirds with the large vocal repertoires have some of the most complex songs and complex sounds. Here is an image of a wood thrush, which is a, a lovely songster. We have a very similar, um, a close relative of the wood thrush uh, spending the summer here in this area of our country, and that's the Swainson's thrush. And they also have a really beautiful sound. And if you ever listen to it, it almost does sound a little bit ventriloquial, um, or it, it sounds mysterious almost. And part of that is because what you're hearing is multiple sounds being generated at once, different types of notes. And so here is an image of a wood thrush, a piece of a wood thrush song, a very small piece. But what you can see is these um, look almost look like check mark, these upturned notes here in pink are generated from the right side of the larynx, okay, of the, the larynx, the syrinx. And then these more buzzy looking green notes that are lower pitched are generated from the left side of the syrinx. So let's listen to this sound. Now this sound is gonna be played at one quarter speed, so it's slowed down so that you can actually hear it a little bit better. So I'll play that one more time. Maybe I'll turn the volume up just a little bit. Oops. Let me pull this back up. Okay, sorry for that. Pause. So we're going to go back through. Okay, and so here we are at the next slide, if I can get it to work. Okay, I think I finally have it. So here we go, we're going to listen to this sound again. So hopefully you can hear there's a, a, a little discadence between those sounds and you can almost hear um, the different sounds now that it, the song has been slowed down. So those are your basics of the vocal apparatus of a bird and get a little hint of what birds are capable in terms of the types of sounds they can produce. And birds have developed really advanced complex systems for communicating with one another through their songs.